now, someone must die. But the big question is who? That's the dilemma for actress Kush Jumbo, who's set to star in BritBox's dark new thriller. Well, before we talk to Kush, let's take a look at the drama promising to have us all on the edge of our seats. This is The Beast Must Die. Ooh. It's a beauty. It does look it's good. It's a beauty. Kush joins us now. Hiya, how are you doing? Hi, Kush. I'm good. How are you guys? Really Very good, well, thank you. you. Lovely to see your smiley face. Nice um, you. It... I was literally just saying the last time I saw you guys on that sofa was the week before I got pregnant. Ah. Like three years ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Oh, so how old is your is your son, is it? He's three, yes. He's three years old. Oh, my gosh. Yes. You, must, you must have given me special, magical... You have to be careful when you sit on this sofa. It yeah, happens, it's, it's I tell you. Like, this is like the yeah. most amazingly fertile <laughs> sofa. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> um, right, OK, so, well, I mean, you are happy and smiley and gorgeous now, but this is dark. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's got some gut twisting turns in it. So we'll set up um, your character, who's Francis, who's a school teacher, who tragically loses her son, Marty, in a road traffic accident uh, on the Isle of Wight. He's, um, he's only yeah. six um, and he's killed in a hit and run. And so pick it up from there. OK, so, yes, she is uh, alone. She lost her husband a couple of years before. She goes to the police and the police basically tell her they're no longer going to investigate the case. They're kind of putting the case on pause. They have no leads. Um, and she kind of doesn't accept this and goes on a revenge mission to not only find the guy that has killed her son, but to um, kill him. As well. Wow. So, I mean, this goes to some real extreme lengths here to get some sort of um, yeah. justice for what's happened. Um, when you're in a character like that and you're living in it and you have to kind of feel what she feels and you're a mum and going home, how difficult is that for you to be able to switch off from those two, from the role? It is. Um, it, it was really interesting, Holly, because there, there's like Kush before I had a kid when I, you play these kinds of roles and now having Max, it was really different. And he was on the island with me while I was shooting the whole three and a half months. And um, on the one hand, you can connect really deeply with what Francis is going through. And on the other hand, when I would come home at night, I would actually feel guilty for getting hugs and kisses from my Max. And yet the next day I'd go in and be completely grief stricken because she was always alone and always knowing that she would never get to see her son get to seven or eight or secondary school or anything. So it was a kind of weird pull between the two, but I think it, it helped. Yeah. It, uh, it, it is brilliant. I mean, it looks really good. It's a great story. Um, and as an actress, um, and we've laughed often on here with people who've come in and said uh, on, a, on their CV, it says all sorts of things that they actually can't do. Um, <laughs> now, now you'll be able to say, you can sail. I can sail. I can not only sail, Phil, I can sail a 48-foot yacht. Wow. Um, and, yes, I had about a month of crash course sailing classes. I'm a city girl, grew up in London, so... You know, I didn't see a cow till I was about 10. So sailing for me was a brand new thing. And it was really hard work. But you can't really play that kind of role if you don't know what all those ropes do. Um, if you don't know kind of like how the boat works, what the what the wind is doing. But it was so cool. And I almost nearly chucked off Jared Harris and Geraldine James off the boat a couple of times. But I kept them on well and they're alive. And well done, well done. Yeah. I tell you what, it must be nice to be back because you've been filming in the States, haven't you, for the last five years or so. To, so to come back and yeah. do a drama like this over here must be lovely. Yeah, I was living there for six, like almost six years and we moved back. We just happened to make the move back here because I wanted my son to be closer to his friends and family kind of at the beginning of lockdown. Um, and I was hoping to do more British drama and uh, more stuff on stage. I didn't know I was going to end up on the Isle of Wight for three and a half months. I used to go there as a kid. I loved going there as a kid. So um, I, honestly, for me, it was the best script that I'd ever been offered um, in the UK. And I was so excited to do it. And so it was it was gut wrenching, but it was also a brilliant, um, brilliant challenge. So well, there's, I another, there's, there's another one for your, your CV as well, because uh, you're also uh, you shot uh, Stay Close. Um, that's with James Nesbitt for Netflix. Yeah, you're working on that at the moment. Can you yeah. can you can you add? Pole dancing to your CV for that one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, yeah, she, she's a character that has a past, um, as they always do in these dark, there's somebody with a past, um, always. And sh her past is that, yeah, she's now this kind of very well-to-do 
Cheshire housewife, but in the past she um, worked as a pole dancer. So me being me was like, well, I'm not having a stunt person do that. I'm going to do it. So I threw myself into learning to pole dance, which is really hard. Yeah. Um, I have legs covered in cuts and bruises, but I can now do it. Maybe what I need to do is put a pole on a yacht and then <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Job done. Job perfect, done. perfect. And you're also ticking off one of your dream roles, actually, because you are going to be in the Take That movie, which I know a lot of people are looking forward to. You especially because you're such a massive fan. Huge. I was a huge fan. I was uh, 11 when they broke up, and I cried for a very long. <laughs> two oh, they're they're the ones I had on my wall. Oh, if only you'd known then that you're going to be in their movie. Yeah, so I'm very excited about it. It's a lovely story, too, that follows, um, you know, some of their young fans and uh, with Rosamund Pike and Ruth Wilson. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a passion project for me because I just thought at some point, I'm sure one of them will have to come to set and I'll get to smell them or touch them. You just want to sniff a member of Take That. I just want to sniff them. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> it's, so yeah, um, yeah, that's going to be fun. It's always so lovely it to, really uh, to talk to you. Um, also, good luck with Hamlet as well. I think yeah. nine I days know. after filming ends on, on your Netflix, you're, you're into Hamlet as well. That's a beast of a thing. So yeah. you are busy. Um, um, so The Beast Must Die is the one that we're concentrating on at the moment. The first two episodes are available on BritBox tomorrow. It's a five-parter. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Thanks, Kirsch. Thank you. Bye. Thank you bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. I wonder if she's pregnant again now. <laughs> No! No! <laughs> Too busy for all that! <laughs> Thank you!